Welcome to the webinar, Lead Poisoning Prevention Week, Making an Impact, presented to you by the National Center for Healthy Housing and the National Safe and Healthy Housing Coalition. Building momentum with social networks. Social media is rapidly emerging as key channel for sharing information, for building awareness, and for health promotion. It's an essential tool for political advocacy as well. And using social media as a new, social networks have been around since, well, since civilization. Social media is just a term that we use for our digital social networks. Now, I want to be clear that one type of media does not completely replace another. And that's why we're talking about the integration of using your local grassroots communications, your local media, your national media, and your social media. They all work hand in hand together to really get our call to action to move forward. So social media with our federal agencies and our funders is encouraged. Right here we have EPA's uh, statement on social media that I just love, that they use social media technologies and tools to share information for everyone to gain a better understanding of the environmental conditions and solutions. And that's really what social media does. It puts the information in the hands of people who want to take action, who are interested. It gets the information out there and puts more power out in the community for us to share information very quickly, live, immediately. EPA has a variety of different social media networks and platforms. They use almost everything. If you go to their website, right there in the middle of their website, they have a uh, box that says social media links, and you'll see that they have every type of blog, social media account. They have multiple Twitter accounts, multiple Instagram accounts. Definitely recommend you following their Instagram account. Very, very informative. They do a great job with it. Whoever's managing their social media is doing a fantastic job, and EPA has really leveraged that tool from town halls to you know moments where they're signing things into responding to natural disasters. It's fantastic uh, the way that they're using the social networks to get information out to the public and to share their work. HUD also encourages social media. Uh, they do strive to educate and keep the American people informed about their mission and about how to create strong, sustainable, inclusive communities and affordable homes for all. So uh, we will have some links for you for all of the networks that are going to be participating in Lead Poisoning Prevention Week, and we'll have continued messages about childhood lead poisoning prevention and healthy homes through their social networks. So why do we use social networks? Well, for awareness and prevention campaigns, social networks are really used in kind of two different ways. They're used for discussion, that's to have talk about public opinion and potential policies change, and it's also used to change social norms. So you'll find that you know in a social network you may have a Twitter chat where people are asking questions and getting more information out there, or where there's a call to action like Childhood Lead Poison Prevention Week, or we're looking at changing policy and increasing funding and raising awareness and having a collective dialogue around a specific topic to move things forward. And there's also when we have parents educating other parents, we find that a lot of those community forums, which we'll talk about in just a minute, are very, very helpful. It's where another parent can ask either a, a practitioner, a caregiver, or, or another parent information about how they can make their home healthy, uh, where they're sharing information about what they've discovered on making their home healthy, about testing their child, etc., and it changes the social norms. And ultimately, both of those work together to change our perceptions uh, and our intentions and get action. So when we look at how social networks and how media in general work, we're looking at sharing information through news, where residents are more informed, our politicians are more informed. It also is the voice of the community. Community members are more empowered to contribute their perspectives through digital media and local meetings. They don't have to have that reporter there. You can create your own buzz and your own feed with social media. It also helps people to take action. You know, any parent can um, create an event. They can get something organized uh, through their school. They can use very inexpensive or no-cost tools uh, for managing events, getting uh, people together, or at least even having a conversation on social platforms. So very, very, very helpful. And again, raising awareness about an issue, about an event in their community, and building capacity. This is from the Knight Foundation, their Impact Study, a Practical Guide to Evaluating Community Information Projects, where they looked at how to use social networks to build momentum for 
for projects and calls to action. We are uh, looking at Lead Poisoning Prevention Week later this month, October 23rd through the 29th. As we did mention in our chat, and I think a couple of people mentioned here, we uh, did see that EPA put their materials up this morning on their website. Uh, CDC and HUD will be following suit. And their toolkit link will be live if it isn't right now. It's probably made live during our during our session today. So there is information out there. We will have all the links and all the resources for you also on the National Center's website along with these webinars. So let's talk about what you can do with social media and how you and your organization can participate in Lead Poisoning Prevention Week and beyond using a variety of hashtags. So the hashtags that are most commonly used are Find Fix Fund, Lead Free Kids, Lead Poisoning, and for this year, LPPW, Lead Poisoning Prevention Week 2016. One question I get all the time from people is, what the heck is a hashtag? So a hashtag, or the pound symbol, is a conversation. It is the way that we identify a topic or a group and how that group identifies ways to communicate with each other. It's also a tracking tool. So it's a way that we can see how many people are interested, how much engagement did we get. So if you look at some of the information that we have from last year, the 2015 uh, outcomes, this is the third annual International Lead Poisoning Prevention Week, and in that they tracked 87 cities and 39 countries organized events, and those were listed on the uh, World Health Organization's event list. We do have a link for you there, and we will have it in our resources. It's also up on the National Center's website so that you can register your event. And it's important because, again, we're going to get these types of reports showing the impact and the collective voice that we have. So be sure to register your events for tracking minimum. And then you can see here that in their report about the 2015 efforts, they tracked three official campaign hashtags. And again, those were Lead Free Kids. It was the Lead Poisoning Prevention Week 2015 for last year, of course, and then the Stop Lead Paint. And with those, they had over 331 mentions for the Lead Poisoning Prevention Week 2015. Now, we want to use the hashtag this year, the Lead Poisoning Prevention Week, LPPW 2016, and get at least three times that. Uh, I think that we can do even better. So we want you to use that hashtag. We want to be able to retweet you. So if you use that hashtag, it'll come up in some of the tools that we're using to follow that hashtag, and we'll be able to promote your message. We being not just those of us on the, on the presentation today, but we being the collective voice of those fighting to end childhood lead poisoning and to eliminate lead hazards. Uh, lead Free Kids had 282 mentions last year and Stop Lead Paint had 72, just on Twitter alone. So we'll be tracking a variety of different social media uh, platforms and tracking those hashtags across those platforms to get a better idea of how we're working together, what really resonated with our communities, what brought attention uh, from others, and we'll talk a little bit about how you can get more attention rather than just a hashtag and a tweet. So one thing that we found that is really, really useful are community forums. Um, Facebook has excellent communities, and their, their community platforms have grown by leaps and bounds in this last year. Part of that is because of live video streaming, which we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, of course, there's LinkedIn. And there are a lot of different professional groups within LinkedIn on healthy housing, lead hazard control, so getting our messages there is important. Uh, Google Plus, with Google Hangouts kind of going away and then coming back as a different tool a little bit later on, it may or may not be the platform to use right now. But Google Plus is um, connected to YouTube, and YouTube has a live stream video. They're starting groups now probably to compete with Facebook. But this year, I think the best way to use groups is to use uh, Facebook groups for our messages. So video streaming, uh, again, YouTube does have live streaming. Also, if you have any videos uh, for uh, families, education videos, etc., you're going to want to promote those. Uh, we do have a way that you can share what you're doing. And we, we really encourage all of you to let us know what you're doing. Let us know any resources. We'll get those out to everybody else that can use them as examples, just as we had for the press releases and, uh, and examples of like Cara's events. Anything that you have to share that others could benefit from, please share those with us, uh, including any links you have to educational videos, uh, family stories, etc. on YouTube. Using your Facebook communities, look to see what communities you have 
locally or you have in your target group. So for instance, we had uh, several nonprofits that were at HUD grantee conference that were using Facebook communities very, very effectively. They either had their own community or they were connected to some parent groups, some daycare groups, those that already had built trust with their community, their private groups where they get conversations about what they're doing and maybe the challenges that they feel. So you can get your information out to those community leaders, to those administrators of those community groups, and they can get it up in their community and really activate them. So look around to see, um, Facebook has search tools that you can look to see what groups are in your area or around a specific topic and use those tools to connect and to, to share your voice. Now we have some examples of online engagement. Probably most of you on this call did see John Oliver's video and they did a fantastic job in talking about lead poisoning and the issues around lead poisoning. I think we all can promote that video over this next month as well. But within two weeks, they had nearly two million views of their YouTube video. That didn't even count the views that they had you know, on TV, when it was actually on TV. Just their YouTube video alone. Excellent example of how when you have somebody that has the national spotlight and has a, a followership, not just, again, on TV, but in social media, how that can go viral. So if you haven't seen that already, I definitely recommend it. And uh, here are some examples of HUD using social media, using their Twitter account. Secretary is very active on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, we see here a couple of different uh, ways that he's been out, not only you know promoting a variety of topics, including lead. So we had him here in Minnesota, and he met some of the HUD grantees and was able to experience our Letty Eddy van and talk with the family. So very great job of telling the, the community stories, of being involved in the community, and of showing HUD in action. So some of the Twitter accounts that you can follow, especially during a lead poisoning prevention week and um, beyond, are EPA's Twitter accounts, the CDC environment account, HUDGov, the World Health Organization, and of course the National Center for Healthy Housing. There will be some uh, uh, Twitter town halls coming up. We will have all that information on the National Center's website for events as soon as we get the dates and we find out more about those. We'll have those up for you. Again, these are the hashtags that are being uh, uh, promoted for this Lead Poisoning Prevention Week 2016. So Lead Free Kids, Find Fix Fund, Lead Poisoning, and the Lead Poisoning Prevention Week. You, of course, can use your own hashtags too. Again, the reason why we use the hashtags is to make sure that everybody's following conversation and that we can track it and we can look at the data afterwards to see how much engagement we had. So be sure to use those hashtags whenever possible so that we can count you and your voice. Facebook, be sure to connect with EPA, HUD, and CDC, and of course the National Center. We will be uh, putting out more and more information on those platforms. EPA, HUD, and CDC will uh, as well. Those are great places to engage and to share with others on your Facebook. So social media for social advocacy is important. It's really important for social advocacy purposes because it does put the power in the hands of the people who care, who are passionate, and who are impacted by the issues. Uh, changes in trends and technology influence our messages and our reach. We're able to each farther, faster with social media. And social media and social networks are used to effectively advance program goals and provide data for evaluation. So I'm Joe Miller. If you have any questions about social media or about this particular topic, feel free to email me or call me anytime.